Welcome to Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, beautiful place. We were here during Balloon Fiesta. We did a full video on Balloon Fiesta, so we'll put that link down in the description. And uh, believe me, if you've never seen that, it, it's, it's a pretty cool video. We're gonna share a little bit more of that with you in this video as well, but Albuquerque is a lot more than Balloon Fiesta, although that is awesome. But there's yeah. a lot more to see and do here. So in this video, we're gonna show you three different places that we stayed during our 10-day visit to Albuquerque. Yeah. We're gonna take you to a brewery. Uh, you know we love those. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And we happen to be here during Indigenous People Day. And one of the places that we're visiting is the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center that we never even knew existed before we got here to Albuquerque on this trip. Yeah. And there's a ton more. So this video is jam-packed full of fun stuff. So let's get started. So welcome to our campsite, one of three campsites we had here in Albuquerque. This is the reason why we were able to come to Albuquerque, New Mexico during Balloon Fiesta. We are at the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center, and this is the first year that they have fenced off one of their parking lot areas that they weren't using to allow RV RVs to come in and dry camp during Fiesta. So I don't think many people knew about it since it was the first year they did it. Sounds like they're gonna do it again, but we were able to get in and get a spot, and we stayed here one night before we were able to get into Balloon Fiesta, and then we came back for two more. So, really, it's been fantastic. Their museum, their restaurants here are awesome. Be sure to check out the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center when you're here in Albuquerque, because it's a gem. I mean, we didn't know about it before now. It's a gem. Okay, here where we stayed at the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center, and we stayed here twice, we ate at the 12th Street Tavern twice. And I'm telling you, it, it was really, really good. One time, uh, a coupon that we got from the Cultural Center for staying here gave us some free nachos here, and they were outstanding. And we got to watch some Sunday football games here when we got back from Balloon Fiesta. So it was really cool the first time we got to eat with some new friends we met, and uh, that was really cool. So uh, yeah, strongly recommend this place if you come stay here or just come visit here. Uh, they got a lot of local beers and stuff and good food. Well, I don't know if you, you can't really tell, it almost looks the same as what we were, but we made it in to Balloon Fiesta. Wow. The weather has been real shady this week. Yeah. And, and so I think someone canceled and yeah, we were lucky. We got in, um, but we were gonna film from the, uh, the, culture, the center. culture center after we uh, went through the museum and stuff, but it was pouring rain. So we weren't able to, but let me tell you, that was fantastic. Oh my gosh, not only was the museum great, but they had dancers and that were fantastic. And they have a phenomenal restaurant there called The Kitchen where we had breakfast and oh my goodness. Very, very good. Uh, we would strongly recommend that if you, next year, it sounds like they're gonna do it again. So if you can't get in to, into the actual balloon fiesta parking then look them up we'll put a link down in the description of how we did it because you can book it online and i'm sure next year they'll do it the same way and really nice people yes easy to get into yes it was a little muddy but it's muddy here at fiesta as well they've just had a ton of rain yeah so we are in the south lot uh, which is dry camping for us. And yeah, we're excited to be here on property. They say that from our windshield, we'll be able to see the balloons. So we hope that the weather will cooperate with us. Well, today is Sunday morning. It's the last day of Balloon Fiesta. Um, they have a mass ascension on the last day. So now they've just started going up and I'm gonna kind of show you what I'm seeing here.
what a surprising thing this is. Right here in Albuquerque is a Petroglyph National Monument. So, of course, we gotta go check it out. Let's go. Something that is really neat about this region of the Southwest is look at this. We're in Albuquerque. We're on the west side of town at Petroglyphs National Monument. There are over 50 national park units within a day's drive of where we are right now. Overwhelming, amazing. So, you know, because it doesn't count unless you have a stamp. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and, um, so... <laughs> oh, there you go. Right. <laughs> right as we get on the trail and going up, a petroglyph right here. Wow. So when we stopped at the visitor center, we are about an hour before the park closes. And so uh, you have two choices, two different canyons. One of them takes longer than the other. So we chose to come to Boca Negra Canyon, which the ranger said you could do within an hour. And right as we came onto the, let's see, we're on the Mesa Point Trail, we start seeing petroglyphs, petroglyphs right away and they've got information about them. These are between 400 and 700 years old, and they're on volcanic rock from eruptions that happened 200,000 years ago. Wow. Up here on top of all this volcanic rock and everything we got up here and it says that if you look in here, this was an old hunting blind from the ancestral Pueblo people. They would come up here and use this as a blind and for shelter and stuff and it's, it's protected now, and, uh, but it's still here. That's, that's pretty darn cool. <laughs> yes, we were. So this is a bit of a hike. Got to do a little rock scrambling. Uh, trails kind of under construction in places, but the view from up there is pretty darn neat. Now, most of the petroglyphs we saw were down here lower. Um, so if you really just want to see the petroglyphs, you really don't have to come up far from the, the uh, parking space. There's a few up there. One. But there are a few up there. It's mostly about the view, though. time to do one museum while we were here in Albuquerque and there are a lot of them to pick from. We decided to go for something unique compared to what we've been seeing this year. So we narrowed it down to the Nuclear History Museum and the Unser Racing Museum. Well, by Lightning McQueen here, I'm sure you can tell which one we chose. And we chose it in large part because 
they offered a Groupon, which is, you know, that the app Groupon where you can get a coupon. We're getting almost half price. We got two tickets for $10.50. Normally an adult ticket costs $10 a person. So we're excited to check out the Unser Racing Museum. So the Unser Racing Museum, huh. Wow, I mean, it's incredible. The, the family history of racing is phenomenal. We have spent <laughs> four hours, I think, here. I mean, there's actually two different buildings and lots of interactive exhibits and stories and cars and amazing. Oh, it, it is amazing and uh, I remember the answers uh, racing when I grew up because I was more into racing probably when I was in my teens uh, with the Indianapolis 500 and everything. And where we grew up in Houston, uh, A.J. Foyt was very big there. And so, of course, the Indianapolis 500 was always on the TV when it was going on. And, uh, well, just didn't know the family history and it's incredible. They started a garage in Albuquerque and that really propelled the family in the racing because they all worked in the garage. They started from the ground up. They built their race cars to begin with. They so were mechanics. They first. were mechanics. So they, I mean, they knew the inner workings. Uh, really cool. Great oh, yeah. story. Glad we came. Oh, for sure. I'm so glad we came here. It is another beautiful day here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Man, these last couple days have been stellar. Blue skies, gets up to the lower 70s, just awesome. Uh, we moved yesterday over here to Enchanted Trails RV Park where we stayed one night back in 2015. And uh, we have a 30 amp full hookup site because that's what they had available. Uh, but it's a uh, it's only about 15 minutes from anything in Albuquerque. So today we're gonna go into town Check out old town do a little exploring. They actually have an Apple store here in Albuquerque And we've got to go over there because yesterday when Tom was getting ready He went to put on his watch and it fell and hit the tile and it wasn't pretty so <laughs> We're gonna go see if we can get that repaired first then we're gonna go exploring We found the Apple store, now let's hope they can fix my watch. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is a nice shopping center. Looks like they've got just about everything here. Yeah, it is. So now this is a place we've wanted to visit for a while. We've come to Old Town in Albuquerque. Gonna grab some lunch and check out the shops. So this beautiful church behind us is San Felipe de Neri here in Old Town. It has served the community since 1706. It is the oldest continuously operating church in Albuquerque. Wow, that's a wonderful way to preserve an old tree that used to probably shade a bunch of the church. But when it died, they made something out of it. That's awesome. We just went through the Romero Street Gallery, which is right behind me. And wow, the art here, it's over a hundred local artists and they, uh, with everything and there is a ton of stuff none of it good for the RV but wow almost glad we don't have a house because if we did we'd probably find something here it's truly a bunch of one-of-a-kind stuff So we're back at the parking lot here at Old Town where we parked. The parking here was a dollar an hour up to five dollars max. Uh, 
Look at this school behind me, it was founded in 1881. And what I really enjoyed about Old Town was just walking around, looking at the architecture. If you go into some of the shops and restaurants, you'll see, pay attention to the floors and the walls and the ceilings. That was pretty neat. And there were a lot of interesting, I mean, the place smells really good too. There's a lot of incense and food and yeah, it was leather work. It was a neat experience. Good time just to walk around and explore. Welcome to our campsite here at Enchanted Trails RV Park and Trading Post in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is site number B11. It is a 30 amp full hookup pull through site. Uh, all of the sites here are on gravel as are the roads, which is typical for this region in the United States. But what they've done here is it looks like the roads are one color gravel and the parking areas are a slightly different colors so it's easy to kind of tell if you're in your space or not uh, they do have some 50 amp full hookup sites as well but by the time we made our reservations the 30 amp what was is what was available it's worked out great temperatures this time of year we're in mid-october in albuquerque getting to the 40s at night mid 70s during the day so we don't need a 50 amp hookup it's worked out just fine this park is older it was built in 1969 but it is very well maintained the people are super nice and it is big rig friendly we've seen some big motor homes we've seen some triple axle toy hauler fifth wheels uh, the roads are wide so it's fairly easy to get around inside no matter what you have we're about 15 to 20 minutes from everything we did in Albuquerque and let's talk a minute about that because is Albuquerque just about Balloon Fiesta and clearly the answer is no we've done so many great things while we were here but there are a ton of things that we didn't get to more museums more mom and pop restaurants art galleries the Sandia Peak Tramway that takes you up into the Sandia Mountains there's a lot to do here in Albuquerque, and I would love to hear your thoughts. What are your favorite things to do in Albuquerque? Because we want to add them to our list for next time we're here, because we will 100% be back. Thanks for joining us, y'all. Until next time, safe travels and happy camping. Bye.